What's going on everybody? Today I'm working on some acrylic. So I wanna give you some tips and tricks, things that I do when working with acrylic and my CO2 lasers. So hang on tight. Today we're gonna to be working on the XRF from One Laser. Uh, and if you are looking at the One Laser lineup of machines, make sure to use the code LASERGUYS to make sure that you get the biggest discount possible and to support me, my channel, and my partners that I work with, with One Laser. Um, enough of that, but let's talk about acrylic. So working with acrylic can be a little bit tricky and there's lots of questions out there. Remove masking, don't, you know, what do you do? So here we go. When I am engraving acrylic, it is best to have the masking removed. Because if you are engraving through masking, it kind of gums up all your engravings with that masking, whether it is paper or it is a clear mask. So when you're engraving, remove that, and I always use as little air as possible. Usually I have just a bleed of air that is enough to keep the nozzle clean and keep my material going. <clears throat> When you're engraving acrylic, you really want to use just enough power to get the look that you're looking for and not too much. If you're using too much air, it really starts to push that residue, smoke, all that back onto your workpiece and really cloud it. And you don't want that. So a lot of times, me, I'm using very low air, so that way it is not doing that. It's just enough to keep the lens clean. What some people will do is they will coat the surface with say some Dawn dish soap, which essentially creates a film over the top that's catching a lot of that residue. And that way when you're done, you can wash it off real easy. Me, I try and just control that power just enough so that way I can just do a quick wipe and my material is clean. But potentially something that you may wanna look into if you're struggling with having a, a really dirty work surface. And I like to make sure that I'm not using too much power for the speeds that I'm running. So you're looking for a nice frost. At least that's what I'm shooting for. A lot of times if you go too deep, especially on a clear acrylic like this, it starts to give you some really deep lines and it doesn't look as good. Um, really on this project, we're going for a nice frosted look on the acrylic because we're going to engrave the back so that way you can see it through the front. So our design will be mirrored. And then also as you're doing your testing, you wanna do a DPI test or LPI test, line interval, whatever you wanna call it. Um, those things are all related together. But essentially, you're trying to get the passes with the laser just tight enough that it's covering everything, but it's not overlapping too much. So that way it's not creating more lines than you need or wasting more time than you need. With the XRF, it is an RF tube, and so it's got a nice fine dot, so we can go a little bit tighter to get that extra detail. So that covers the engraving side of it. Let's talk about cutting it. So when I'm cutting acrylic, I use more air, but you don't wanna to use too much because what happens is when you're cutting, it's essentially melting that plastic, and if you're pushing too much air, it starts to add extra stripes to your cut lines. And really that's because it's blowing that melting plastic and making those little ripples. So our goal is to make the edge of the cut as clear as possible so you can almost look through it. And that's really achieved by going with just slow enough speed that you're getting a nice consistent flow through the material, but you're also not pushing too much that it's starting to burn that material back away from your cut lines. So what I recommend doing is doing some testing and finding some good cut settings that are getting you through, and then I would slow it down just a little bit from there. My goal when I'm cutting anything is really to make sure that it cuts all the way through every single time. So when you're doing test cards, a lot of times people will jump to the fastest speed that they found that cut. Really when you start getting into detailed cut lines where the machine is speeding up, slowing down through the cuts, some of those corners may not cut through because it's starting to slow down or somewhere out in the middle of the field, it's going faster than in the corners. So you really wanna make sure that you find a good cut setting and then just slow it down just a little bit or up your power just a little bit. So that way it's cutting through every single time and you're not wondering whether that last piece cut out. And if you have any other questions, please drop them down in the description so we can talk about it more. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you my layout 
my settings, and then we'll get it done. All right, so here we are in Lightburn, and I've got my file that I use for this open. Um, you can see this is the plate that we're going to make, and everything in blue is going to be engraved. So here are my settings. I've got a thousand millimeters a second at 50% power, min and max, and we are doing 347. So really it's 350 um, lines per inch. So 300 LPI, DPI, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's what we're doing for this engraving. We are doing fill all shapes at once. And so this down here is the design that the customer sent me and got it ready for engraving. So I'm just going to make sure that this is grouped and we're going to mirror it because this is going to end up in the middle here. And just like you can see some of these other ones, like this was a picture and I used the same settings for the picture is that 1050 and the same DPI, but we need it mirrored. So that way, just like these numbers here, it, you can read it through the back as it's installed. Um, we need to go ahead and size this down. So that way it fits right here in the middle right there looks good and i'm going to go ahead and just grab onto this and center it so now it looks pretty centered i might shift it down just a little bit maybe back up um, okay so that looks good so this is ready to run uh, i'll show you my line setting that i'm doing so I'm doing 12 millimeters a second at 95% power. And again, this is a, I want to make sure that it cuts and I'm not, I'm not questioning whether it was done or not because I've got all of these little holes here and then the actual outside cut. So wanting to make sure that everything is done as soon as I'm ready to pull it out of the machine. So I do go slower than what I can do. I can do faster than 12 millimeters a second on this eighth inch clear acrylic, but I don't because then it's time saved not having to try and recut it again or figure out what didn't cut. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get this sent over to the machine and I'll show you me just getting it zeroed in and getting ready for the cut and we'll run it. All right. So here over at the machine, I've got my acrylic loaded in. And I set the job so that it's going to start at current position in the top left corner. So because I did send the file over to the machine, I need to make sure that I go and we're going to autofocus. Now that's done. And then we're going to set the origin here. So now my origin is set. And if I go and hit the frame button, it'll show me that's right where the project is going to go. So all in all, I'm ready to go. So let's go ahead, hit the go button and let it run. And just like that, this guy is ready to go. So I'll just pop these little stragglers out. And here you can see how nice the design comes out. Um, I'm going to leave the other side of the masking on just to protect it in transit as it's shipped out to the customer. But nice clean engravings, nice frosted look, not too much depth. You don't get those deep, ugly lines inside of the engraving. So there you go, acrylic engraving and cutting uh, made pretty simple and easy on the One Laser XRF. Uh, really, same principles apply on whatever CO2 laser that you are using. For diode people, clear acrylic is your enemy. Um, it's where you really do need a CO2 laser to be able to interact with that clear material. So hopefully this was helpful and you got some takeaways from this video. Um, if you liked it, please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.